Thomas Garza, thank you so much for joining us on Bloomberg and congratulations on your results. When you look at growth going forward, uh, given where Credit Suisse is right now, what units will outperform the rest? Well, look, we had a very strong investment banking result in 2020 uh, and we had a very good start in January, but it's, uh, it's too premature to make a prediction now for 2021. But we feel very good about our growth opportunities uh, on uh, the investment banking side, but also especially on the private banking side, be it in Asia, be it in Switzerland, or be it uh, in IWM. What does it mean for where are you expecting the markets to be? So there was a little bit of a blip in 2020, given where markets went and you know where they could go. How much are you expecting volatility to be back in the next eight to nine months? Well, unfortunately, we are not out of this pandemic yet, and therefore we have to expect to have more volatility in the markets generally, even though they have come down somewhat. Uh, but uh, un un until we have uh, more clarity around the economic recovery, uh, the, the road will still be somewhat bumpy. But as I said, you know, private banking market overall is growing nicely, and especially in Asia, and therefore uh, we are quite confident that together with our initiatives around lending, uh, around private markets, uh, around ESG, we have some very good growth opportunities. Um, uh, Thomas, can investor, what can actually investors expect from Credit Suisse on these one-offs? Is that it? Is it something that you've gotten rid of? Or do you think there's, is there things that you have to go through? Well, you can never say it's, uh, it's over, uh, but uh, I definitely feel good about the fact that we have dealt with some historic issues. Uh, which we have addressed now in the fourth quarter. Uh, but, uh, you know, I, I, would, I would never say it's all over, but I definitely feel uh, much better. What do you still need to work through, in your view? Well, you, you never know what, uh, what's around the corner, right? Uh, but uh, overall, uh, we've had uh, uh, two issues that we wanted to address. One was uh, the impairment on York. The other one was... Uh, around our RMBS uh, legacy cases. Uh, we have addressed those. So uh, right now I feel that we have uh, a very good platform to start 2021. And uh, as we said also in our press release today, we are uh, very encouraged from the first six weeks in the year. So what clearly is your message to, to investors right now? Well, my message is, you know, we started the share right back. We have a strong balance sheet. We have uh, all four divisions uh, firing on all cylinders right now. Uh, so uh, we are obviously aware that the pandemic is not over uh, and we cannot exclude further um, bumps in the road, as I said, but uh, I think Credit Suisse uh, is now at the start of a new growth phase. We want to invest in our business, not only uh, in the investment banking and private banking side, but also in technology, in ESG, uh, and therefore, um, based on what we have achieved in 2020, uh, we can uh, look forward to hopefully a strong year. What do you think we'll see in terms of uh, potential credit losses this year? How, how bad will the economy or how could the economy get bad and what does that mean for provisions? Well, nobody really knows, but directionally we would expect lower uh, channel credit provisions or we call it CECL, current expected credit losses. Uh, but uh, the specific credit losses will still be somewhat elevated compared to the 10-year average. Uh, so um, directionally, definitely, we see lower credit losses in 2021 than in, um, in 2020. But uh, it's too early to declare victory, and obviously we have to be very diligent in how we do business going forward.